What up peeps, welcome to a pickup video. It has been a long time since my last one, and at least for me, and I have a ton of stuff to show you guys. There's probably enough stuff here for three pickup videos, honestly, but I'm going to squeeze it all into one. So I have a few bigger items I'm going to show at the beginning here just to clear some room. Got this giant Merrill plush. This is from 1999. This thing is super cool. Um, so got that in the big collection we bought um, and we got a bunch of other plushies as well which I'm going to show. So we have an older Psyduck plush. Very cool. This one is 1998. And then we also have this Mew which takes batteries. You squeeze the hands and it 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 meows, it mews, but um, I haven't seen the eyeballs do anything. They look like they're supposed to light up or move or something. Doesn't seem to be working. This one is also from 1998. And then we got this older Blastoise plush. The reason I decided to keep him is because he has the original tag, which is very, very awesome. And then we also have an old Bulbasaur plush here. This one is also 1999. And then we have this Jigglypuff, which is still with at least part of the original packaging, which I thought was kind of cool. 1999 on that one as well. We have an old Squirtle plush with the original tag. And another small Meryl with the original tag as well. So pretty cool stuff there. Oh, one last one. We have a Poliwhirl. This is an older one as well, 1998. Then I got this really awesome Mario plush. He's got a rubber head, rubber hands, rubber feet. Uh, this is made by Applause. This is 1989. This thing is older than I am. Very, very cool. And then I got this Mario also from 1989. This is a coin bank. It does not match the other older Mario coin banks I have. And then I got this old Mario plush keychain, which is not dated, but I mean, you can just tell that that's old. So, very awesome stuff there. Also got this really old Luigi toy, which is like a wind-up. He winds, but he doesn't really walk anymore. This is 1989 as well. Pretty awesome. Little um, Aerodactyl keychain. Missing a tail. <laughs> and then... In here we have the box for a Switch Pro Controller. I don't know why that's in here got a little Spyro plush and then just a bunch of like little figures and stuff that I was going to put around the room some Pokemon and Pac-Man ones nothing super special with those and then some other big items here we have the Sonic the Hedgehog 25th anniversary plush still with the packaging this is an expensive plush, and I didn't realize it until I was putting it into my spreadsheet, but that good thing goes for about 60 bucks. And then we got the World of Nintendo Super Jumping Mario. We have one of these Nintendo Trophy figures. This is Link. Very cool one. It's not sealed, but it does have the original packaging. We also have the Walgreens exclusive 8-bit Mario and Donkey Kong figures there. And some Halo figures. Got this one here, the Ghost. That one is sealed along with this one, which is sealed, like I said. And then, ugh, it's hard to reach. <laughs> we have a Street Fighter II lunchbox, which we just got recently. Very awesome. And then, just because they're big, we have the box only for the Smoke N64 console as well as the box and styrofoam for the ice blue N64 console. The boxes are obviously the harder parts to get from those sets. I'm not worried about the systems. I will find them when I find them. So other than that, we got a PS4 Pro. This is not really part of the collection. That is Abby's, but I figured I would show it. So that is pretty much everything that was like out of reach for me. So. I'm going to lower this down a little bit. And so the rest of the stuff here that I have to show is all around me. So, ah, all right. 
So I have this Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games and Genesis Mini with a Nintendo Switch lanyard. I found this at the outlet today. Uh, I'm not really sure exactly what it's from. Uh, some, from some convention because it says West Hall booth number 4800 on the bottom there, but very, very cool. I have the Nintendo 64 Trilogy soundtrack. This is a three disc set which has Mario 64, Star Fox, and Mario Kart. I have a sealed thing of Game Boy printer paper. I have a Sega Game Gear Game Tips Volume 2 factory sealed VHS. Someone brought that into the store. And then some various stickers and promotional things. I have this awesome PlayStation 1 bag. And then the Club Nintendo Mario fan. If I can get it to actually fan out. There you go. Pretty cool. I know they did multiple Club Nintendo fans, but um, that's the only one that I have. Someone actually brought that into the store. Then I have these, like, promotional display things for PS1 games. That one's lenticular. Someone sent us those, which is super awesome. Thank you very much. Then I have the Nintendo Sticker Activity Album. Super old, super worn. Gonna try and see if this had a date on it somewhere. 1989, it says on the inside. Very, very cool. I have the Mega Man NT Warrior little two pack of figures here. And then another Super Mario lunchbox. Um, I'm not sure if this is the same one as the other one I have on the shelf already, but there's a bunch of figures and stuff in here. I'm not gonna go through them all. There's some Mario, it's an older Mega Man one. I'm trying to get through all the weird stuff before we get to the actual games. Uh, Wigglytuff and Jigglypuff and Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan battle figures, still brand new. I have a few of these in the collection already, so that, that just adds to it. Got this weird Spy Hunter like kit car, which I think was a pre-order bonus or something, because it says gift with purchase, not for resale on the front there. We have the Chun-Li, Chun-Li, whatever, Street Fighter controller for PS2. I believe with the addition of this one, I now have all four. Um, there may be some that I'm that I haven't seen yet, but out of all the ones I've seen, that makes all four of them for the collection. I have this really cool light-up switch dock shield, which I was going to put on the the system, but I don't know, <laughs> haven't decided 100% yet. And then I have four of these factory sealed Pokemon figures. Here I have Meowth and Mew, and then also have Togepi and Psyduck and it looks like they're so I'm missing Eevee, Squirtle and Charmander from the back of all of them those are the only three that I'm missing but I think those are pretty cool they are all sealed now, there was a couple more opened ones that um, I put out at the store then we got another Wii U accessory somebody sent this to me this is the Mario Kart 8 protector very, very cool. And then uh, one more Halo figure here that is sealed as well. And just because it's digging into my leg, I got the Game Boy Advance e-reader kiosk, and then someone very graciously sent me a new sticker for the front because the original one was ripped off. But this thing is super cool. Um, if you want to go back and watch the vlog where I got it, uh, I don't remember what it's called, but um, I showed it a lot more in depth in that video, but that thing is super cool. Bought that from someone over a Facebook group. So I think that is pretty much it for all of like the figures and toys and promo stuff. So from now on, we just have games, systems, and accessories. So I'm gonna start off with PSP because I only have two. We have uh, Platypus and Pixel Junk Monsters Deluxe. These ones both came from Recycle Video Games. Abby and I picked these up on our trip um, to the coast. I believe these were $8 each. We'll go with uh, DS, 3DS stuff here. I have a Factory Sealed Super Scribble Knots. And also a Factory Sealed Nancy Drew the Hidden Staircase. Nothing special, just sealed games I didn't have. And then Personal Fitness for Men and Personal Fitness for Women. 
Um, very, very cheap games, but I'd never seen them before. And we got multiple copies um, from the garage sale where we bought out the rest of that game store. Multiple of them each, so I was like, oh, I'll just keep one of each for myself because I've never seen them, so why not? Then I got these all from Fred Meyer. They were $14.99 each. They were on sale. Sealed copies of Ever Oasis, Monster Hunter Stories, and Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga plus Bowser's Minions. And then also we have Nintendogs Best Friends, which um, I thought that I had never seen it before, but when I went to add this one into my spreadsheet, into my collection spreadsheet, I realized I already had one, but it was the, the Nintendo refurbished variant, which I must have bought from Nintendo's website. So I guess I have seen it before, but didn't have a regular copy, so now we do. And then I also got the slipcover for Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days. Uh, Mike, I had never seen the slipcover before this one came into the store, and uh, I already have the game, so I just kept the slipcover. And since then, another one has come into the store with the slipcover. And then I got, incredibly rare, a factory sealed limited edition Seattle Mariners Nintendo DS Lite. Uh, got this a while ago, um, but. Like I said, haven't made a pickup video in a long time, but this thing is apparently limited to 2,000. Um, can't find any other sealed copies anywhere, at least when I looked. It's been a while, though. But very awesome. And then we also, not DS-related, but handheld-related, we have a clear Neo Geo Pocket Color. So, I thought that was pretty cool. This one is a European version. Um, so we got that from Recycle Video Games as well. So let's move on to Sega stuff. I have some pretty cool stuff here. I have a lot of cool stuff here pretty much for every system, but some Sega stuff in particular is really, really cool. And what I've done again this time is some of the stuff that comes into the store that I'm keeping for the collection, I have not shown it in the vlogs when it came in. One, because I want there to be a reason for you guys to actually watch the pickup videos and see stuff that you have not already seen in the vlogs. And second, people like to complain and say that I keep all the good stuff, which obviously is not true. If you guys watch the channel for more than one video, you'll realize it's not true. But it's just easier to not have to listen to people complain. <laughs> so there are some games in here that you have not seen in the vlogs. So first up we have Mega Bomberman for the Genesis. This is the only Genesis game I have to show. But this one is complete, and before this one came in, before this particular copy came into the store, I didn't even know there was a Bomberman game on Genesis. So that is really cool. Since this one came in, someone traded in a cartridge copy as well. So we have a cartridge for the store, and I got that one. And then we have some Dreamcast games here. We have Bust a Move 4, which I love Bust a Move. And then we have Sega Marine Fishing. <coughs> And then Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, and also Resident Evil 2, which is super awesome. And then Street Fighter 3 Double Impact. It's got some stickers on the case and stuff there. And then Heavy Metal Geo Matrix, which is a game I had not heard of previously. And uh, when I was looking it up... Um, I was going to price it out for the store, but then I was like, you know what, this is just too cool. Soundtrack by Megadeth, Dust to Dust, Halford, and more. Had to add that one to the collection. And then two more here, we have Chronicles of Pern Dragon Riders. And then also Worms Armageddon. So I now have, I believe I now have Worms Armageddon for Dreamcast, N64, Game Boy Color, and PlayStation 1. <laughs> and then I have three... Sega Saturn games here, which are, all three of them are really, really awesome additions to the collection. Uh, my friend Sam has really been going heavy after Sega Saturn stuff, and I think his collection quickly surpassed mine in terms of, like, the rare or more expensive titles. Um, but, you know, these three are putting me back into competition with him. So we have Darius Gaiden, and then Three Dirty Dwarves, which I always just thought was a hilarious name. And this is a game that I actually bought when I was living in Florida. Um, got this from one of the game stores down there. And this is only the second copy I've ever had. 
And then lastly, we have Guardian Heroes. So this one's pretty hard to find. These three Saturn games came from the lot. If you guys want to go back and watch the vlog, I think it was some, called something like we bought an entire van full of video game stuff. And um, those three came from that. So moving on to original Xbox. These are going to be in no particular order aside from the very last one. So we have Nightmare Before Christmas, Oogie's Revenge, Obscure, Blackstone, Magic and Steel, Death Row, Underground Team Combat, Mortal Kombat Deception, the Collector's Edition with Scorpion on the front there. I think there's more than one. Um, so this is the one with Scorpion, but I think I might actually even have some of the other ones. I'm trying to look behind me here. Xbox is right over here. You can kind of see it. So I guess I didn't have any other ones. I don't have any other Mortal Kombat games at all, but that one's very cool. Uh, this one is a little controversial. So I refuse to sell this one at the store because of what it is. And I've talked about this before and I got some flack for talking about it before. Um, people just, I don't know, people like to get upset about things. <laughs> like they just, they want to find something to be enraged by. But this is the guy game and I will not sell this at the store because of what it is. If you guys want to look into it, you can. Um, but the reason that I'm keeping it is simply because I'm going after the complete set. And I don't want to be there minus this one game. And I already have this game on PS2 in the collection. And it's just... It is expensive because it was pulled off the store shelves. So it is a little difficult to find. Um... If I wasn't going for the complete set, I would sell this. I would sell it on eBay. I wouldn't sell it at the store, like I mentioned before. Um, but it is kind of expensive, and if you want to look into it, you can. Um, it's definitely not for kids, though. Um, but like I said, the only reason I'm keeping it is for the set. So then we have The Suffering. And then Aliens vs. Predator Extinction. And then King of Fighters 2002 and 2003. It's two games in one, which is kind of cool. And then SNK vs. Capcom, Capcom SVC Chaos. Cold Fear. Robocop. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Predator Concrete Jungle. Capcom Classics Collection Volume 2. Okay, that one is complete. The, they, they should all be complete. This one felt really light, so I was I thought maybe it didn't have a manual. And then finally, this one here is really, really awesome. And from the minimal amount of research I did, um, looks like it's pretty hard to come across. And this is a factory sealed copy of Halo 2, but it is sealed in a blister pack with the strategy guide as well. And I believe this is like a Costco type deal. Um, but the game is sealed and it's a first print run because it says right there, do not sell before 11.09.04. And the whole thing is sealed together. Uh, the game inside is sealed and the strategy guide inside is sealed. So they're, they're both double sealed technically. But uh, when I got this, I was trying to look it up. There's obviously nothing on price charts for this particular bundle. And then on eBay, there was one listed, but nothing sold, at least in the past 90 days. So I have no idea what it's actually worth. I don't really care because I'm not trying to buy it. I already have one. <laughs> but I thought that was really, really cool. I love these like Costco blister-packed things that they do. I'd love to get some of the Nintendo 64 ones eventually. So let's move on to Nintendo Switch. I have a lot of games here. First, we have the limited run uh, Toe Jam & Earl Back in the Groove. This is number 29, their 29th Switch game. All these limited companies, limited run style companies, are just releasing so much stuff. Um, I tried to keep up at first, but it's just impossible. And then at number 32, we have Bomb Chicken. From Super Rare Games, number 17, we have Machinarium. And then back to Limited Run, number 31, we have Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. And then this one here is just a steelbook, but this is the steelbook for Let's Go Eevee 
and Pikachu. And then we also have Goosebumps the Game. Got this one from GameStop, it was like 10 bucks. And then also from Limited Run, number 22, this is Windjammers. Also from Limited Run, number two, Mercenary Kings Reloaded Edition. It's nice to get some of the earlier ones. And then Dust and Elysian Tail, this is number 12. And some of these I bought from Limited Run. Um, I believe a few of these were traded into the store, and then some of these came in a package um, that we got. This one is from Super Rare Games, number 18. This is Wolverblade. And it comes with a little uh, cardboard slipcover, which is cool. I think that's the first one they've done with a slipcover. And then we have Diablo 3 Eternal Collection. Got this one from GameStop. And then Yonder, the Cloud Catcher Chronicles. Abby bought this from one of her friends. And then FIFA 18. It's just a random game that was traded into the store. And I didn't ever want to have to pay for it very much. So it's a cheap game. So I figured it's probably not going to sell anyway. Might as well add it to the collection. And then lastly, Dragon Quest Builders 2, which if you guys have been watching the vlogs, you know that I am absolutely in love with this game. I loved the first one, but this one, this one is so much better. Um, Dragon Quest Builders 2, I think I have something like 45 hours into the game so far, and I'm nowhere close to being done. I'm loving, loving this game. And then one more, I don't even remember what it is, so I have to open it again. Um, here's the box for it though. Big, massive box. This is, I'll tell you here in a moment, this is the special edition for Super Neptunia RPG. There's the game. Um, it's got a bunch of other stuff in the box here, but if you really want to see, look up someone's unboxing because I don't have time to pull everything out. Um, there's a deck of cards in the bottom here, which are in the way. There's a little plush thing. Uh, but yeah, like I said, if you want to, you can look up an unboxing. This one, I believe, came, like, from the manufacturer or the distributor's or the publisher's website. Um, as far as I know, you couldn't get this anywhere else. I haven't looked at it since I ordered it, so I don't know if it's sold out. I don't know if it's, if it's hard to find or whatever, but I do not like how the outside box has absolutely no writing or text at all. It's just these weird little designs, so it doesn't display well on the shelf, but it is what it is. So let's look at PS1 games next. I'm trying to, trying to you know, go between uh, console makers and stuff. So in no particular order, we have a sealed NFL Game Day 2004. We have Alundra 2, which I got in a trade from my buddy Sam. Then Colin McRae Rally 2.0, which looks like it would be a really cheap game, but this one actually has some decent value, especially for like a racing game. I think this was like somewhere between 15 and 25. I don't remember for sure. It's been like a month since I looked it up. Then we have Disney's Hercules, a sealed copy of Madden 2003, Transformers Beast Wars Trans Metals. Another surprisingly kind of expensive game, Bass Landing. I think this was like a $14, $15 game. Don't know why. <laughs> then we have Legend of Mana. And King's Field 2. And then three new long box games to add to the collection. Right behind the camera there are my long box games. And uh, I've got a pretty decent selection going so far. And these ones are cool to add to the set. So we have Road Rash. And then ESPN Extreme Games. And then finally, I think one of my more expensive long box games, and the case needs to be replaced, but that is D. The manual also has a little rip up there, but not too concerned about that at the moment. I'll get an, I'll get an upgrade eventually. Someone will probably trade another one into the store that'll be in better shape, and I will swap them out. That is typically what I do. All right, so let's go to GameCube. I have a big stack of GameCube here because I am trying to focus on that set next. Um, so I'm I'm 11 games away from completing the Nintendo 64 set, and so my plan is to focus on GameCube after that. And so I am attempting 
to grab a bunch of the GameCube games now, um, just because I can't find the N64 games I need already, so I might as well start working on the GameCube a little bit. So, first up, just a condition upgrade, a King Arthur manual. Uh, my manual uh, is messed up in some way, so I grabbed this one from a copy that came into the store. I'm going to take my previous manual and put it in that copy at the store. And then I have the ultimate codes for Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. I have like four or five of these ultimate code things, all for different games, and so I just hold on, hold on to them whenever I find them. Then we have MLB Slugfest 2004. This is actually like a $25 game. I got this from Recycle Video Games for only a couple bucks. I also have MLB Slugfest 2003, which is not so expensive. And then Red Card 2003, which is a bit more expensive for a sports game. Also, Dr. Muto. This one's actually kind of expensive and uh you probably wouldn't think it but auto modalista got this one also from recycle i think it was like four bucks from them but this is about a 35 dollar gamecube game so definitely be on the lookout for that um, as far as i know the ps2 version is not expensive only the gamecube one is then we have tarzan untamed rugrats royal ransom trans world surf next wave madden 2004 Zoo Cube, which kind of looks a little sun faded to me, but I'm not sure. Bratz Diamonds. NASCAR Dirt 2 Daytona. Home Run King. Lotus Challenge. SeaWorld Shamu's Deep Sea Adventures. As you can tell, a lot of these are just filler titles, but I am going for the complete set, so it's nice to knock them off the list. Super Bubble Pop. Zapper. Open Season. ATV Quad Power Racing 2. And then we get into the really, really good stuff. So we have Resident Evil 2. Very hard to find. I still need 3 and Code Veronica, I believe, to have all of them minus variants. And then I got the Resident Evil 4 GameStop Special Edition. Comes in this big metal case here. Um, when we got it, uh, we purchased it from uh, someone, Abby, Abby handles all the Facebook and Instagram messages, so sometimes I don't know who things are coming from, but we bought this from someone who contacted us through there, and when they contacted us, they just had the metal tin, and then they had the lithograph, or the art cell, and the little strategy guide thing there. So, I was able to snag one of the games from the store, we had multiple copies, so that one went in there, and then I realized it was missing this little soundtrack sampler thing, and I bought this off of eBay, and so this is a fully complete one now in very, very good condition. And then we also have the Legend of Zelda Wind Waker and Master Quest double pack thing. Uh, this is pretty hard to find. Very happy to get that one. And then finally, I have a condition upgrade for the Super Monkey Ball 2 pack, which I'm very, very happy about this because my original Monkey Ball 2 pack I bought off of eBay a couple years ago. And I think I spent like 100, 120, 140, something around that. It was under 200, closer to the $100 mark. I was really happy about that. But the spine was sun faded, and there was a hole punched in the front of the box. And the artwork was not missing, so when it was all put together, if you were holding it like this, you couldn't really see that there was a hole there, but there was. So my buddy Sam saw this at his local game store down in Florida, and he was like, hey, there's a Monkey Ball 2 pack here, are you interested? And we went back and forth, and he did some negotiating with the guy, and he was able to get it for, I think, 230. So I gave him 230, plus shipping, and he sent this to me, and it's in very, very nice condition. I then was able to take my old copy, I put it out for sale at the store, uh, as soon as I posted the picture of it on Facebook and Instagram, we had three or four people contact us, and I sold it within an hour for 400. So that's really awesome well 400 that included free shipping with insurance and, and signature confirmation so it was more like 386 but or 382 but i got to upgrade this and make some profit on top of it for the store which was very very awesome that does not happen all the time and then one accessory i have a factory sealed game boy advance to gamecube link cable this is the blister pack version there's another one, well, I guess they're both blister packs, but there's another one that just comes with like a cardboard backing with this on the front. This is the full like self-containing stand-up unit. Uh, I think I got that for about 20 bucks shipped off of eBay, which is really cheap for that. So I was happy about that. 
Now let's move on to PlayStation 2. So also have a bunch of stuff here, including some some really, really awesome, uh, hard to find games here. So these are going to be in no particular order. This is however I stacked them up when I was putting stuff here, taking it out of boxes. So first up, we have a factory sealed SOCOM US Navy SEALs. This is a headset bundle. So it's in a big box, comes with a SOCOM headset. This one is sealed, like I said, it's got a cut on the top. It's not perfect. You know, box has some creases here and there, but that is super awesome. And then we have Fugitive Hunter, War on Terror, Dynasty Tactics, Ace Combat Zero, The Belkin War, which is actually kind of expensive. You wouldn't think it for an Ace Combat game. Then we have Raw Danger, Outrun 2006 Coast to Coast. Got this from Recycle Video Games for I think four or five bucks. This is like a $35 game. So very awesome. And then a really expensive one here, we have Blood Will Tell. I got this off of eBay for I think 160 shipped or 140 shipped. I think it was 140, but it goes for like 200. So that was a pretty good price and it's in excellent condition. Then we have a factory sealed Outrun 2006 Coast to Coast. It's got a few little nicks and stuff in the label here and there, so it's not perfect, but this one, funny enough, was sent to us from someone who lived in Australia. Somehow they acquired a sealed copy of the North American version of the game, and uh, they sent us this and said, surprise them with what we send them back, so we put together a nice little package for them and did the trade that way, which is pretty unique. Then we have a sealed copy of Puzzle Quest, a sealed copy of Monster House, and we have Gungrave Overdose, The Nightmare of Druaga, Bloody Roar 3, Resident Evil Outbreak File Number 2, Gallop Racer 2003 A New Breed, pretty uncommon little series, a factory sealed copy of Killer 7, and also a factory sealed copy of Fatal Frame 2 Crimson Butterfly. I usually don't go after sealed games, but if I happen to find them for a good price, I will pick them up, which is what happened with those two. I think most of the other ones were traded into the store. Then we have Dual Hearts, which I got from Recycle Video Games Complete for 25 bucks, which was awesome. And then we have Soccer America International Cup, which is a very weird game I have never heard of, never seen the cover, never heard anyone talk about it. It's not worth too much, it's like a $10 game, but it appears to be incredibly rare. Um, we just got this traded in a few days ago. I looked it up. There was only two copies on eBay. One was like 10 bucks, and the next one was 60. Uh, price charts says 60, but it also says that only like three or four have sold in 2019 or something like that, complete. So I don't know. This is probably one to be on the lookout for. And then finally for PS2, we have Kuon, which is another heavy hitter for the, for the system. I got this from Recycle Video Games as well. I paid 300 bucks, which is very, very slightly below retail, but I was happy to do that because I was getting such good deals on everything else, it really evened out. So that is an awesome one for the collection. So now I only have Nintendo stuff left to show. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna end with the cartridge stuff, even though the stuff that is not cartridge stuff is way more rare but I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the Wii and the Wii U stuff now. I only have uh, three Wii games here. I have a sealed copy of Rock Band 2, a sealed copy of Punch-Out, the Nintendo Selects version, and then the cardboard case version of Remington Great American Bird Hunt. <laughs> I know this is just like the pack-in that comes with the zapper or the gun or whatever, but I don't know. Whenever I find them like this, I keep them. So I try to get this version by itself and then the big box one as well. Um, so why not? And then four Wii U games here. I have the Scribblenauts Unmasked uh, Green Lantern DVD variant. So it's got the little thing right there to uh, tell you that it's got a Green Lantern DVD, which is also in there. So one of the easier to find variants, but very glad to knock that off the list. And then I got Axiom Verge for the Wii U. This is from Limited Run. This one is still sealed, I'm not gonna open it. But that was the last Wii U game released. 
And then finally, the two rarest items I have to show you in this video, which you guys probably know what they are. We have the Hyrule Warriors Limited Edition Factory Sealed from the Nintendo Store in New York. And then we also have the Factory Sealed Mario Kart 8 Limited Edition, also exclusive to the Nintendo Store in New York. So those things are really, really awesome. <laughs> Honestly, some of the most expensive games in my entire collection, and my leg and foot are asleep <laughs> from sitting like this. Alright, so, try to change my position here just to be a little more comfortable. Alright, so I have Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Virtual Boy, NES, Super Nintendo, and N64. So, start off with Virtual Boy, because I have one game. Red Alarm. This one was traded into the store. So I have this one and the World Class Baseball or whatever it is. Those are the only two Virtual Boy games I have right now. I think at PRGE, I'm really gonna try to focus on getting as many um, Virtual Boy games as I can. It's a very small set. A couple of the games are kind of expensive, but um, in terms of like total price for a set, it's one of the cheapest ones to complete. So at PRGE, I'm gonna be focusing on trying to get the rest of those ones. Then I have one cartridge only. It is a not for resale Metroid Fusion, which is super cool. And my leg is really, really asleep. It feels dead. <laughs> I'm gonna pause real quick. 20 minutes later. All right, had to take a break <laughs> for about 20 minutes or so. I had some chocolate milk, let my leg come back to normal. So uh, I believe we left off with just having uh, the Game Boy stuff, and then NES, Super, N64, so I'm gonna go with Game Boy first. And once again, in no particular order, I have a really nice box upgrade for Pokemon Yellow. The box that I previously had was really, really nice, but it just had, like, the top of the front part of the box right there was, like, a little bit chewed up. This one is, like, mint condition, so that was a nice upgrade. And then I have Risk, Battleship, and Clue. And some of these do not have cartridges. Um, some of them are just boxes, some are just box and manual, and then some are complete. SpongeBob SquarePants, Legend of the Lost Spatula. The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, Four Swords. This one, surprisingly, um, I only had it factory sealed. <laughs> so I've got an open one now. X-Men, Reign of Apocalypse. This one does not have a cartridge. Mickey's Dangerous Chase with the plastic still on it. This one also does not have a cartridge. Super Mario Land, this is another box upgrade for me. The Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle 2, complete with the plastic still on it. Tetris Plus, no cartridge. And just plain old Tetris, but this is the Platinum, or the Player's Choice version. Also no cartridge, but I mean, we probably have 30 of them at the store, so not worried about that. So let's do, so I have more NES than 64 and Super Nintendo put together. <laughs> um, but I think, I think the Super Nintendo stuff is going to be the most expensive. I'm gonna end with N64 though, cause it's my favorite. So um, some of these are condition upgrades and some of them are new additions. I don't know which is which off the top of my head, but we have Wheel of Fortune, Dr. Mario, NES Play Action Football with the plastic still on it. When I mean with the plastic on it, it's not factory sealed. It's only cut open at the top. Twin Cobra with the plastic still on it. 1943 with the plastic still on it. Top Gun, The Second Missions. Tetris, that one is an upgrade. Hollywood Squares with the plastic still on it. Faxanadu in min condition. Uh, the Magic of Scheherazade and Wizardry Knight of Diamonds. And then Back to the Future. Save a couple of these for last. And then Pac Man. This one is a condition upgrade, I don't know for sure. Mickey Mouse Capade. Also, some of these do not have cartridges. Tiger Heli. Magic Johnson's Fast Break. The Karate Kid. 
Rad Racer with the plastic doll in the box. This one is an upgrade. Also has the 3D glasses in there. Little Mermaid with the plastic still on it. That one's also an upgrade. And Defender 2. No cartridge. And then the last four here. Let's see. Last four here we have Slalom. Black box one I didn't have. River City Ransom. Picked this up from Recycle Video Games for, I think... I don't remember the exact amount. I think it was like 45 or 50. And then Bucky O'Hare. This one is complete. I already had the manual for this, and uh, someone had listed the box and cartridge on one of the local Facebook groups, and I was like, hey, I'm interested in that because I already have the manual. And I think I got this one for... I want to say 120 and I already had the manual so 120 for a complete copy basically was really good and then finally the last NES one is Bomberman 2 which is a very hard to find kind of expensive NES game there and uh, this one I got from one of the collections that we bought out um, at the store so moving on to Super Nintendo stuff I have a couple cartridges first. I have the Street Fighter Alpha 2, which was sent to me, which is super awesome. And this is completing uh, a box manual that I already had in the collection. And then I also got this International Tennis Tour cartridge, which is a, um, a Nintendo Game Counselor library copy. Um, so that's pretty cool. I... I don't know too much about these, but uh, my buddy Stefan is like a big collector of all the Nintendo counselor type stuff. And the Nintendo counselor were the, like the people that when you called Nintendo Power to get tips on a game, they're the ones you would talk to. Um, at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo coming up in October, Stefan is bringing a bunch of stuff t uh, for part of the museum. And um, I don't even think about it, but I'll, I'll ask him if he has this one already, and if not, maybe this can be in the museum as well, just as part of the display. That'd be kind of cool. So then, I have one accessory here. This is just a condition upgrade, but that is a box for a controller. And then, in no particular order, I have Super Bomberman. This one came from the same collection as Bomberman 2. And then Tiny Toon Adventures Wacky Sports Challenge. No cartridge on this one. Then WWF Royal Rumble, also no cartridge. Turtles in Time, this one is box only, I believe. And then Toy Story. And Virtual Bart. A lot of these are just box or box and manual only. Batman Returns. And then two condition upgrades, Total Carnage and Jeopardy Sports Edition. So I had both of them already, but we got really, really nice boxes traded into the store, so I was able to upgrade condition and sell my other ones at the store. So lastly, we're moving on to Nintendo 64. I have a Japanese Animal Forest, which is the very first Animal Crossing game. One of our regular customers went to Japan, and he brought this back and gave this to me as a gift, which is very, very awesome. So thank you to Andrew for that. And then I have a Nintendo 64 Pocket Power Guide Volume 3, just a little, little like, cheat book thing. And then I have a few manuals here. I have Army Men Air Combat, Penny Racers, and Carmageddon 64, which complete my copies of those games. And then I just got, I don't even need to show this, but I got a cartridge upgrade of Tony Hawk 3. It's in the baggie as well. Um... I didn't need to show that, but it was here, so why not? <laughs> and then I have Bottom of the Ninth with the plastic still on it. And this was game number 12 that I still needed, so I got this one off of eBay very recently. I think it came in the mail like yesterday. But it was about 25 bucks for that, which in this condition I think is a great price. So I need 11 left. Then we have Micro Machine 64 Turbo with a blue convertible car. So this is just a variant for me. The first copy that I got of this game has a police car in there, so this one is a variant. I figured I would keep it. Next is a condition upgrade for Mario Party. This box is in mint condition. 
Also got an upgrade for Conqueror's Bad Fur Day. We've had three boxes come through the store recently, <laughs> and uh, my previous copy in my collection was the worst out of out of the four that we've had. This was the best of the four, so that is a really, really nice upgrade for me. And then lastly, an upgrade for Pokemon Stadium. This box is in really nice shape. It's got some some artwork, you know, where, um, where there was a sticker removed on both sides, but other than that, it's in really, really nice shape. And then finally, for the N64 collection, I have three more boxed controllers. These are all Japanese controllers. Um, as you guys know, aside from getting a couple of the Fantastic controllers factory sealed, I have completed the North American set for all cardboard boxed controllers. And so um, I'm going after the Japanese ones as well. And so here's three more off the list. I have the clear blue and white controller, complete inbox there. I also have the atomic purple. And then finally, the last item for the video, I have the blue and yellow Pikachu controller from Japan. This one also came from my buddy Andrew, who went to Japan and uh, he picked this up. It's not perfect, it's got a little hole in the box right there, but uh, I'm not really too picky. Other than that, it's in great condition, and uh, maybe, you know, down the line at some point I will get an upgrade for it, but I'm just happy to have it. And to get it in person was very cool. He went to Japan and got it, brought it back, brought it into the store. That's how we got it. So that is it, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this extremely long video. If you sat through the whole thing, please smack the like button. Leave a comment down below and let me know you made it to the end. It's very much appreciated. And uh, just so I know the people who actually made it to the end, I want you to put the word pineapple in your comment. That'll tell me. If you put the word pineapple in it, that'll let me know that you actually made it to the end. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to smack the like button, comment pineapple down below. Uh, don't forget, of course, to subscribe as well and check out our the new Double Jump website. Link is in the links for everything are in the description down below. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you next time.